So, Ralph Ranić has just been appointed interim at Manchester United manager. He's been coined by many as the godfather of Gagan pressing, the one who taught so much to the likes of Jurgen Klopp, Thomas Tuchel, Ralph Hasenhudel, uh, and, and and many others. He's been labelled a professor of football, and now he's here to try and drag Man United back to the very top, at least over the next six months. Understandably, a lot of United fans, including myself, are very excited about this appointment. We're going to see a new, more modern, more popular style of football, and we're going to see Ralph's vision and Ralph's philosophy implemented into the United squad. Gegen pressing. What is Gegen pressing? Gegen pressing, which means counter pressing in German, is <laughs> pressing the opponent immediately after losing the ball. As Ralph has said in, in many of his appearances and, and, and videos and interviews, the aim of his teams is to win the ball back within eight seconds of losing it. Pep Guardiola has a similar system where he says his team needs to win it back in six seconds. Ralph's idea is then not to have the ball for no reason. Get a shot away within 10 seconds of winning it back. So that is very direct, attacking, pressing football. The team needs to press as a unit. They need to work together. Everything that Man United don't do at the moment, that's what he's bringing. Something I should mention is that, from all accounts, Ralph's idea isn't to press to win the ball in tackling. It's, it's not to directly go and man for man press each player and try and win the ball like that. It's more to set traps to place players in passing lanes in a tackle. Keen FIFA nerds are going to be wondering, how do I implement this style? into my team. What formation is Ralph going to use? We don't know. He hasn't even played a game yet at the time of recording this. After looking at previous appointments such as Ho uh, Hoffenheim and uh, RB Leipzig over the two appointments that he's had there as well, we have a good idea of, of what of what we're going to see. Ranić used the 4-3-3, uh, the 4-2-3-1 the or a 4-3-1-2 diamond and uh, a 4 triple 2 in the past. For the most part he doesn't stick with a single formation. He'll use whichever formation that he thinks fits the players best. And that means that United were most likely going to see either the 4-2-3-1, because that's the formation that Ole preferred and, and that the team have been playing a lot. The 4-3-3, which is what's preferred by the likes of Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp. Patrick Vieira uses it, Gerrard uses it. That's a very sort of standard formation. But then the other main one is the 4-2-2, something that Ralph Hasenhutl uses a lot at Southampton after his appointment there from RB Leipzig. And it's something that we might see at United. It's going to be very different, and I'm interested to see how this happens. When it comes to FIFA, it's safe to say that pretty much everybody's the same. If you play foot champs especially, you're going to come up against 4-5-1 with the one central midfielder and the and the two cams. The 4-2-3-1 with the, with the cams as well, and even the 4-4-2. So you're pretty much coming up against the same formations every time. These are the meta... It works. That's not what we're going after. We're going after the Ralph Rangnick style, the formation, the Gagan pressing, and maybe that's the difference that helps you win a game. This is how to play as Ralph Rangnick's Man United in FIFA 22. I've gone for the 4 triple 2 I'll briefly take you through my squad. We've got Edouard Medney in goals. His, uh, what's this card called? I do have Dudek on the bench, who I've used before, who has who has been very good for me. But this Mendy card looked irresistible, especially at uh, 50k. In defence, I've got the French combo of Raphael Varane and uh, Issa Diop. Diop has been a nice one. I've been hoping for them to get into the knockout stages, so that he gets a nice little upgrade. Still waiting on that. And then Varane. Uh, when I bought him ages ago, one of the most expensive defenders in the game, if not the most, uh, but well worth it, every penny. He's been fantastic for me. On the fullbacks, I've gone for the English combination of Luke Shaw and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now, Luke Shaw is just one of my favourite players in real life. That Euro final goal. only we'd gone further. Last year he had found his form, this year it's wavering a bit, we'll see when he comes back from his head injury. In FIFA, very good card. I've used the likes of Alfonso Davies as well, um, and although he's got much better pace, 
I think overall, Shaw's a better card. So that's how much praise I've got for him in this game. Can't really go wrong with Trent. I mean, he doesn't have the greatest of pace, so I can see the value in his other stats. 88 passing in particular is a very good one. Now in the middle, we've got our two CDMs. This one over here, Declan Rice. What a season this man is having. Holy sh! Hey, man shares a birthday with me. Yes, bruv, I didn't even know that. Oh, well, I like him a slight bit more now. 14th of the 1st, 1999. Declan Rice. Hit me up, Declan. Let's have a joint birthday party. Well, aside from having the greatest birthday of all time and having a fantastic season as well, he's also got a great card. Um, he's got a decent pace, not so good shooting, but passing, defending, physical, all good, medium, high, nice. And he fits into this team very nicely. To the right of him, I've got uh, Yuri Tielemans. Again, I'm holding on to this one because I'm hoping he's going to get an upgrade soon. And then we come to our cams. We've got the deadly duo of Bruno Fernandes and Kevin De Bruyne. Two of the greatest players in the Premier League. And they've both got high high as well. So that's going to come in handy on the defense. Uh, De Bruyne's got five-star weak foot. Then up front, we've got the mighty Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Rip. My highest respect for that man, not only as a player, but as a manager. Thank you, legend. Uh, I've only played 27 games with him, but 24 goals and 8 assists, a very good return. And he plays amazing in-game. And then on the left, someone who Ralph's uh, actually worked with before, it's Timo Werner. They work together at RB Leipzig, and obviously his pace, his energy is going to be good for our high-pressing style. We've got 95 games, 80 goals, 25 assists. Clearly, fantastic return. He's going to be a beast in this team. Then on the bench, we've got uh, players like Sancho. We've got Rashford here as well and Grealish, who um, has recently got an upgrade. And uh, that is a very nice card. Okay, so now that we've covered the team, let's cover the main points, the tactics. This is how you're going to transform whatever team you have, no matter if it's as good as this, worse than this, better than this. It's going to transform your team into Ralph's team. Hold on. I swear that's Ralph and their man come. This is the pillar of the entire point of the process. Press after possession loss. You see, literally in the description, the teammates will press the ball for approximately seven seconds. Press after possession loss. So as soon as you lose the ball, seven seconds, your team are on it, pressing high. And uh, then after that, you'll drop back into a shape. We've then got width, it's just set it at 40. One of the fundamentals of football is to be compact in defense, squeeze the pitch, don't let them get through. Width at 40 seems fairly reasonable. But we've got our depth at 90. Now, I don't want to go all the way to 100. It seems like a bit of an overkill. But 90, you know, we do want to be right up high. We want to press them, squeeze them into the final third. Now, I've gone for... Uh, an interesting combination here because I've gone for the long ball as our build-up play and direct passing as chance creation. A lot of people associate long ball with teams like Burnley. When people now ask me if I like football, I say yes, I do like football, but not Burnley. Burnley can fuck off. Stoke, teams like that that are sort of the the traditional English size, the rough and tumble of the of the. The English football, the physicality, hoof it up the pitch, big striker knocks it down and bangs one in, the second striker. That's not what we're doing, that's not it. This is long ball in the same way that Jurgen Klopp is long ball. Or the, you know, the point is to get from defense to attack quickly. Ralph's teams and Jurgen's teams as well, you'll see this. Alexander Arnold and Robertson ping long balls. Van Dyke as well. They're just, they're just glorified Burnley, okay? They ping long balls up to Salah and Mane all the time. Ralph's is the same sort of style. If you get the ball up, that will get us higher up the pitch immediately. And then if you do lose the ball, you're pressing up in their third. You're not playing out in your own third. So that is why we've gone for long ball. It's not a defensive tactic. It's not a Burnley tactic, no offense. Chance creation, we've got direct passing. Again, if you're trying to get a shot away within 10 seconds, you can't be sort of mumbling about just sideways back and forth back and forth direct passing up bang 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 that's in we've got our width at 75 i actually typically play a bit wider than this that's what she said <laughs> um, but because we've got a, a bit more of a narrow formation you want the cams to really sit in those pockets you don't want them to be pushed out too wide so i've narrowed it just a bit players in box 
I've kept that just above half. You want to have enough in there that you're going to have a chance to score and, and, and to keep the ball, but you don't want to overload so that you've got no one to cover a counter attack. All right, let's move on now to our instructions. Start off with the goalkeeper, comes for crosses, sweeper, keeper. Again, playing the meta a bit, coming for crosses, but we want it to be dominant in the air. We want it to be a good keeper, sweeper, keeper to sweep up anything that might come in behind. I think you're mad if you don't put that on. Center backs, always leave them neutral uh, i don't know why you would change this just leave them neutral they're perfectly fine i've got both luke shaw and trent alexander arnold on the same tactics often i like to have one fullback pushing up higher and one sitting in the midfield in this case the formation the cam sit inside the width is provided by our fullbacks on both sides we need them both bombing up and down so we need both of them on join the attack overlap and I've got them on step up as well. I've set our two CDMs differently. We've got Rice, who is still going to be the sort of pivot, the, the the one that everything goes through. So I've set him on cut passing lanes. We want to have him sort of intercept, stay back while attacking, and then cover center. Because if, he, if he's covering center, he's always going to be that one, that sort of Jorginho role that he plays at Chelsea. Whereas Tielemans, I've got a man mark because you want him tight to the opponent. Again, stay back while attacking. Uh, cover wing, just for a bit of... Yeah, that's the default one. And free roam, just so we can sort of roam about, pick up a pass if, if Rice is being marked or if he's not available. Interestingly, I've actually kept our cams completely default. Balance, balance, stick to position and normal. Often I like to put both of them on free roam or at least one of them. Uh, but in this case, you don't really want them to free roam. I don't know where they would be roaming to. We put them in the pockets, just stay there. The both of them have been left on basic, as have both of our strikers. So that is our tactics. This is the Ralph Ranick way. This is possibly what we're going to see at United very soon. Uh, it's definitely what he's used previously. So let's get into a game and see how we perform. Ooh, ooh, damn. Okay, he's got friggin' Ronaldo. All right, here we go. Close him down. All right, let's go. This is where we need to go. Oh no! Ah! Switch that out wide. Shaw's on the overlap and doesn't bother moving. Alright, here we go. Now we win it. We win it. He's offside though. He's not! He wasn't offside! What a goal! That's what I'm talking about. Press high, win it, chance created, scored. Switch that. Again, Shaw on the overlap, providing the width. All right, now we, we press, we press. Yep, that, that was within eight seconds. Ah. Tielemans, switch it, good. Shaw's on the overlap. Beautiful from Bruno. Shaw. All right, this is where we have to win it. Go, nice. All right, we've, we've won it, we've won it. Now get it forward. Shot away within 10 seconds. Ah, didn't happen. We've won it back again, that's two quick wins. Again, we've won it. All right, now Werner's through. This is where we get a shot away. Beautiful! <laughs> See, you wait quick, you get a shot away quick, the defense isn't set. That's what you're exploiting. You're exploiting, if you can win it quickly, the defense is out of position, they won't have time to get back if you get a shot away quickly. Oh, piss off, Kimbembe. Yes, we've won it, we've won it. All right, again, Werner, yes! <laughs> My camera had stopped recording, but what a goal. What a goal. Just before half time as well, that is two perfectly showcased goals. The goals we conceded were not good. More my fault than the team's fault. Let's try and do that. Let's try and not concede this half then, at least. Uh, oh, okay, we've won it. See, we've won it high up the pitch. Now let's go. Solskjaer. Werner again. Oh, it's a good save though. And we've got that shot away again. Same again. Again. We're creating these chances. Oh, that should have gone in. That one should have gone in. We're all... 
There we go. We've won it high up again. And Werner's through with his pace. Oh, Kimpembe, piss off. Oh, Werner, bit of skill. Oh, it's much more. Oh, here we go. Oh, and Oli's won it up high from a poor pass. Yes! Come on. Oh, what a finish as well from the man. The boy has come back and we're 4-2 we're up. Win, 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 win. Yes, good win. All right, let's look at the map. Let's see a long ball. Go. Shaw's on the overlap. Beautiful ball. Timo Werner again! Oh! He's just stat batting at this point. Okay, here we go. Rice. Beautiful ball out to Bruno. Werner's there on the uh, on the reverse pass. Not quite in, but it's a good idea. It's the right idea. Bruno again wins it high up. Werner! Woo. I'm going to bring on Jaden Sancho. There you go. There you go. Oh, he's paused. Is he going to quit? So it, 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 whether he does or not, he's, he's flustered. You know, even with a team as good as his, when you play high intensity pressing like this, they get flustered. It's Ole! Oh, it's Sancho! Oh. Come on, come on, can we do it? Nah, he's not gonna quit. Damn. This is where we're exposed a little bit. Oh! Ah! We've conceded another. We couldn't hold to our goal of not conceding in the half. Two minutes of added time to not screw myself over. It's a corner. Should be the last kick of the game. Get rid! Yes! It's a good win. It's a win for Ralph Ball. We got him, boys. Okay, so it's a big win for Ralph Ball. It's a big win for the lads. It's a big win for me. Uh, and if you've watched this video, I hope it's also a big win for you. Uh, if it was, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below uh, who you'd like to see me analyze and, uh, and, and do next. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Turn